What is going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Nowak and this is the Smallmouth Experience. And today's topic is one that I'm super excited about and that is fishing a jerk bait. It's one of my favorite techniques in the spring, really for two reasons. One, it's just a really fun bite. You're fishing that jerk bait along and then that fish tries to take it away from you. It's a really aggressive strike. But the other is because it's so effective. It catches both lethargic fish as well as actively aggressively feeding bass. So it's just a really good approach to go out and chase big smallmouth with. And the way we're gonna break this down is the same way I have all of these tips and tricks videos. Start by talking about where I'm fishing it, when I'm fishing it, how I'm fishing it, and then we'll talk about the physical baits that I'm using to be effective and confident out there on the water. Now, if you guys enjoy this video, please do me a favor, go down and give it a thumbs up because it lets me know that you guys want to see more of this content. And if there's a certain technique or bait video you guys wanna see me talk about, go down there, find the comment section of Believe It Moved, and let me know what you guys wanna see in the future. So without further ado, we're gonna dive on into this thing. Let's start by talking about where I'm fishing this. And there are two main places that I'm gonna fish a jerk bait. The first is on high percentage fish feeding areas. So in the springtime, that is typically your windiest areas of the lake where those fish are corralling and feeding on bait fish, whether that is a main lake point, uh, a contour change, with some wind blowing onto it, or it could just be isolated pieces of cover under the water. It's just high percentage feeding locations where those bass can corral, ambush, and feed on bait fish really effectively. The, this is really where I'm going to find my flurries of fish, where I'm going to find concentrations of bass and get on those five, 10, 15, 30 fish bite areas, is in those high percentage feeding areas on the main lake or near the main lake where those fish are staging up to get fat before they push up to spawn. The other effective location that I'm fishing a jerk bait is on shallow flats. Now the reason that shallow flats are so effective to fish a jerk bait on is because you can cover water really quickly with this approach. You can take that jerk bait, put your trolling motor on high, cast across that flat, and when you catch one, you might be able to sit there and catch two, three, or four fish. Or if those fish are on that flat to spawn, you can pick off those roaming fish with this technique because you can cover water put it in front of their face, and these fish are still aggressively, actively feeding up on that flat, they come over and bite. But this is really effective covering water on shallow flats in the fall time. And the fall time is, is really when I like to fish a jerk bait again because those fish are pushed up onto those flats to chase bait fish. When they're feeding on bait fish, there really isn't much better approach than to throw a jerk bait on that shallow flat and fish through there quickly with the bait that looks like what they're feeding on. So main lake, isolated um, fish feeding areas, and shallow flats are my two main places that I'm going to pick up a jerk bait. This is not typically something I'm just gonna put in my hand and like run down the bank with, because I don't think that's an effective approach. You wanna be relatively targeted, you know, know where you're casting this thing, know where you're fishing it to be the most effective. So that brings me into my next section, which is when I'm going to fish this bait. And typically for me, this is a moderate water temperature bait. This isn't for warm water. This isn't for really cold water. For me, I'm looking for water temps between 45 and 65 degrees, really that pre-spawn through the start of the spawn. And again, that late fall through the fall is really when I'm looking to fish a jerk bait and keep a jerk bait in my hand. As soon as that water temp on my graph reads 45, and as soon as it reaches 65, I'm going to put a jerk bait in my hand and I'm going to put a jerk bait down. It's for those times when those fish are feeding on bait fish, feeding aggressively and getting really fat. And that to me is the optimal feeding temperature, 45 to 65 degrees. Now, I know there's gonna be someone in the comment section that says they love to fish jerk bait during the summer. They love to fish it during the winter. But for me, that is when I have the most confidence are between those certain water temperatures. Now, how I'm fishing this bait, there are two main approaches that I use. And the first is your standard jerk bait approach, which is what I call the jerk and pause, okay? It's when you fish that jerk bait with a cadence, jerk, jerk, pause. One, two, three, four, five, jerk, jerk, pause. Let it sit there. Jerk, and you're gonna fish it with different cadences depending on the day that you're fishing. And what I mean by cadence is really that rhythm that you use, that jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause, that is what I call a cadence. Now, one thing you guys will notice if you're watching my jerkbait fishing videos, you might hear me humming a song or, or singing a song to myself. The reason I do that is to basically use varying cadences until I figure out what those fish want. So I'll use the rhythm of the song to set the cadence of the way that I'm fishing this bait until I figure out what those fish want and then I'll sit there and use that cadence. Now, this cadence 
this cadence will change day by day. So you have to kind of keep an open mind and pay attention to what you're doing to get these fish to bite. Sometimes they'll eat on the pause. Sometimes they'll eat when you're jerking and past them, but kind of be willing and keep an open mind when you're fishing a jerk bait to figure out what that cadence is. The other approach is the long pause approach. And this works effectively, or this works very effective or most effectively in deeper, colder water situations. So this, this is something that I really figured out a couple years ago with my buddy Durds and Caleb. They came up, we went to a northern body of water, and what we noticed was those fish were eating that bait when it was sitting still for long periods of time. So what we do is we cast that bait out, turn the handle a couple times to get that jerk bait to dive down to depth, pull it once and let it sit there for 10 to 15 seconds. Pull it again, let it sit there for 10 to 15 seconds. This is a hard jerk, it's just kind of a, a pull to get that bait to move forward let it sit there. The reason that this is so effective in deep and cold water situations is because that bait is really lethargic and just kind of hangs there in front of those fish. Those curious bass can come up to it, they can look at it, and when it goes to move again, that fish is triggered and bites it, or that bait is sitting there, that fish comes up to it, it's curious, it's curious, it's like, that's not dangerous, then it eats it when it's sitting there. So really that longer pause approach works effectively in those deeper water situations or those colder water situations. But most of the time, I'm just using your standard jerkbait approach with varying cadences depending on the day that I'm fishing. So now that we've talked about where, when, and how, let's move into the gear that I'm using to fish a jerkbait on. And this is something where a lot of people are gonna have differing opinions. So if there's something I say that maybe you don't do or you don't use, please let me know what's different and what gear you recommend down in the comment section because there's going to be something that you guys don't agree with or you think is a little bit different from the way that you guys fish a jerkbait. And unlike a lot of approaches, jerkbait fishing is super, super personal. You're gonna like a certain length rod, you're gonna like certain baits, you're gonna have certain things that you're very confident in. And for me, jerkbait fishing is a super personal, specific approach. So I wanna hear what you guys do as well to have confidence when you're out there fishing a jerkbait. Now, if you're new to jerkbait fishing, I would recommend something between six foot nine and seven foot long for a rod selection. Medium power is going to be kind of that ideal power in a rod because it's going to give you the ability to fish that jerkbait for a long time, but not overwork the bait and keep those fish pinned on a light treble hook. So six foot nine to seven foot long, medium power. I'm using a TFO Tactical Elite seven foot cranking rod for my jerkbait setup. The reason I like that it has a really short handle, which allows me to work that bait effectively, but it has a soft tip. And that soft tip on a rod when you're fishing a jerkbait is really important for one, keeping those fish pinned, but for two, kind of getting the maximum action out of that bait. If you have too fast of a rod, too stiff of a rod, what it's gonna do, it's gonna overwork that bait and it's not gonna allow that bait to kind of get that natural darting action. So you want something with a little bit softer tip on it when you're fishing a jerkbait. So I'm fishing the TFO Tactical Elite seven foot cranking rod. The reel that I'm using is a Lose Tournament Pro reel. It's a high speed gear ratio bait casting reel. The reason I like that high speed gear ratio for moving baits, like a jerk bait, is because when those fish eat it, if they're coming to me, I can catch up to that fish with that seven speed gear ratio reel and get a hook in them, keep a hook in them when they're coming at me with those small treble hooks. I'm throwing it on 10 pound test fluorocarbon line. For me, that just allows that bait to get to maximum, maximum depth and kind of get the most action that it can possibly get when it's down there. So six foot nine to seven foot medium rod, high speed gear ratio reel, 10 pound test fluorocarbon line would be my recommendation for fishing a jerk bait. Now diving into the baits themselves, but before we do that, I wanna talk about color theory as it relates to jerk baits, because there's three main color selections or color theory selections that I would recommend. Keep it really, really simple a clear or natural bait for when their water clarity is normal and it's sunny outside, a bold color bait for when the water gets off colored, or a white sided bait, and I go to that white sided bait when it's overcast and kind of nasty outside, there's a little bit of chop on the water, that white sided bait is gonna get a lot of bites because those fish can key in on it, silhouettes a little bit better in that kind of nastier weather situation. So clear, natural, bold, or white sided bait, 
or what I would recommend. Now let's move into the baits themselves. And there are two main categories of bait that I'm gonna be talking about. Shallow diving, which is three to six foot diving jerk bait, and deep diving, which is six to nine or six to 12 foot diving. And the way that I'm gonna choose the jerk bait that I'm gonna be throwing is basically I want that bait mid column. So if I'm fishing 12 foot or less, I'm gonna to go to a shallow diving jerk bait. If I'm fishing 12 foot or deeper, I'm gonna to go to a medium or deep diving six to, to nine to 12 foot of water diving jerk bait. Try to get it as close to the middle of the column as you possibly can, and that's the way that I'm gonna choose the jerk baits that I'm gonna be throwing. Now we're gonna start with the one that I have the most confidence in currently, and this is a Dual Realis 100 SP. It's a little bit smaller profile jerk bait, smaller size jerk bait, but has a rounded body profile, so it has a lot of roll and flash side to side, and I've caught a ton of fish on this bait this year. This is the AM Edge color, sort of a blackish purple back, chartreuse belly, catches a ton of fish, especially when that water is just a little bit off colored. I really like this bait. Another color that I've been trying out and playing with that I think is gonna be killer once these fish push up onto the shallow flats to get closer to spawn is this pink back, a little bit of chartreuse on the side and then clear body, but just another really good color. But I like that Duo Realis 100 SP, just a ton of confidence in that thing. I've caught a ton of big fish on that bait this spring. The next, if you guys have been around my channel for a long time, is the Six Cents Provoke 106X. This is a jerk bait that has caught me a ton of fish, and this is in a color they don't make anymore, copper greenback shad. Um, I don't have any other new colors, but this is just a really effective bait. Has a nice darting action, has a little bit of roll to it, but a tighter action, and it triggers fish a long ways away. This is one of my natural colors, and this is a style of color that I like a lot. Darker greenish back to copper sides, with a little bit of translucency and a white belly. Triggers fish, looks like a variety of different bait fish, whether you're fishing around perch or shiners. This is a color that just catches a lot of fish and I have a lot of confidence in. And then you'll see this kind of carry over into my other baits, but this style of color is something that I have a lot of confidence in for my natural style colors. And then finally, a Mega Bass Vision 110 style bait. Now this is a knockoff. I don't have the money to buy Vision 110s. I just really don't think it's worth spending the money, $27 to buy a Vision 110. So this is a knockoff, but it's a really good bait. It's a Lucky Craft RCSTX bait. The reason that I like these 110 style baits, they have a really tight darting action and it's almost like they hop. So when you fish this bait, what you'll notice is it'll, you'll fish it and it'll kind of hop and then hold, hop and then hold. Whereas most baits dart and roll, it's more of a hop and hold sort of action. It's a tighter, um, wiggle to it when you jerk this bait, but it triggers fish and they absolutely smash it. Now this is a custom color. I mean, it's not really a custom color. It's a pro blue bait. And then I painted the belly chartreuse. I really like that kind of blue back with the chartreuse belly and that dirty water situation. So that's been really effective, just like that AM edge color has for me. Moving into my deeper diving jerk baits, there are three, four-ish models of jerk baits that I like to throw, but the one that I have the most confidence in and have caught so many big fish on, and this is a true Mega Bass bait, this is the Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus One. The reason I like this bait is its attention to detail on the design of this thing. Now, there are some knockoffs you can get. In fact, my buddy Ron painted me one that's virtually identical to this, to this bait, but the Vision 110 Plus One in that deeper diving jerk bait size is my favorite bait to go with. It's pricey, but if you can afford it, it's a great, phenomenal bait. Now this is the HTITO Tennessee Shag color. A little bit of chrome on the sides, dark back, copper, white belly, a little bit of chartreuse on the tail. This color absolutely smashes big fish for me. This is what I'm gonna be throwing anytime those fish are around that 12 foot range. Just a really good color. And just like that other Mega Bass style bait, kind of darts and then holds. Hops and then holds. And that's what gets these fish to bite. There are no other jerk baits that I found out there that kind of has that hop and hold action to it. And I think it's unique. I think it triggers those fish in a way that other jerk baits can't because when that bait's sitting there and holding nose down and bouncing just a little bit, those fish key in on it. I don't know what it is. Caleb smoked me on it and then I bought some. 
and I was keeping up with him. This is a special bait. Another one that I like to throw, especially in deeper, deeper water, is the KVD Deep jerk bait. The reason I like this, it dives deeper than most other jerk baits you can find on the market, and it has a very neutral action. It's kind of like a, if you were to fish a crankbait, like a jerk bait, that's how this works. It's very slow, doesn't have a lot of roll to it, just kind of very slash style, doesn't have a lot of action to it. But for some reason, in those colder water situations, when those fish are deep, this is a bait that gets a lot of bites. The KVD Deep. I have it in two colors. I have it in this like natural shad style color, and then I have it in a perch color. And those are really the only two colors that I fish this bait in. In that deeper water situation, I very rarely am fishing a bold color, um, especially in this big body jerk bait because those fish are less aggressive. They're more lethargic. This KVD deep jerk bait for me is when those fish are really, really lethargic in cold water situations. So I don't want something that has like a crazy color to it because we're going to be able to inspect it really, really easily. And then the last one that I'll throw on a bait casting setup is the Lucky Craft Stazy 90 V2. The V2 is important because this means this bait suspends. Now this is a phenomenal bait for those long pause situations. It has a really long lip. You can get this thing down to about 10, 11 foot of water, um, but I'm going to reel this bait, get it down to depth, and then jerk and hold pull and hold and this just like that kvd jerk bait this is the only color i have that in supernatural color colder water situations my buddy dirty dirds is the one that put me on this bait and i know it catches a lot of big fish then honorable mention another jerk bait that i really like but i really struggle to throw is the rapala shadow wrap deep it's a hard bait to throw because there's no weight transfer system so it really wants to helicopter you can't cast it that far unless you put it on spinning gear but this thing flat out catches fish. If you're looking for a moderately priced jerk bait, this absolutely smashes them. Again, really natural color, green, copper, white, super good color up here in the Midwest. Catches big small up everywhere. And those are my favorite jerk baits that I want to be throwing. Now, if there are any questions or comments about anything that I do jerk bait related, or there's something that you guys do that I might not have talked about in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys want to see in future videos and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care of tight lines. God bless. Go catch some big fish. Pursue your passion.